I just want to compete all around the world, lifting heavyweights, making funny videos and doing mad stuff for the rest of my life. Eh? Honestly, the possibilities are just limitless. Eh? And I'm really blessed. My name is Jaden Tyson Lang, born and raised here in Southwest Sydney, Campbelltown. My dad is Samoan Fijian and my mom's Chilean. I am currently the fourth strongest man in Australia. I love my upbringing here in Campbelltown. I think it's a huge contributing factor in, in, um, in shaping me into the person that I am today. I believe that uh, growing up less fortunate made me uh, more grateful for everything that I have today and um, it's just made some of my success just that little bit sweeter. Just like most Polynesian kids in uh, Southwest Sydney, we had the dream of wanting to play in the NRL. I was 11 years old and I started playing under 12s. So I started a little bit late, but um, yeah, I was a little fatty. And uh, my uncle played NRL for Melbourne Storm. That was a huge motivation for me because I saw the way that everyone idolized him. Everyone in my family always spoke so highly of my uncle. In my house growing up, we had photos of my uncle playing for Melbourne Storm all around the house. I always looked at that and I always thought to myself, man, I would love to be in those shoes, eh? And, and kind of like, that was where my dream to play NRL stemmed from. I made West Tigers development under 15s, which was called Harold Matthews. So I made a, a represent my first ever representative team and uh, we had started gym for rugby and I, I'd never been to the gym. My dad used to go to the gym, but he never let me come with him. I did what any other kid would do. I asked my dad for a gym membership for my, I think it was my, 16th, 16th, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was my 16th birthday. <laughs> like, my dad was like, nah, he kind of said no straight away. And uh, we went through my whole birthday and I hadn't received a present yet, but you know, we had a nice birthday and it was just before I was about to go to bed. And I went up to my dad and said, oh, thank you, thank you for my birthday today, dad. Like, I had a really good day. I'm gonna go to sleep, like, good night. And my dad goes, oh, you're going to sleep already? Let's go get your present, let's go to the gym. And I was like, oh, is that all right? Oh, is that all right? Is that all right? And we went to the gym, my dad signed me up, and that's pretty much how my gym journey like began. I used to go to the gym before school. I was a 16 year old kid waking up at four o'clock in the morning. I used to walk all the way down to the bus stop. I used to catch a bus like to the bottom of this like street. From there, I'd have to cross another rugby field. I'd have to walk through some residential areas just to get to the gym. I reckon it at least took me an hour and a bit to get to the gym. I'd train for about an hour. I'd have all my school stuff packed in my bag and I'd start my day uh, school after already having a, a full gym session under the belt. When I was young, I'd watched Pumping Iron. So the movie with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno and stuff like that. That movie, <laughs> that movie's the biggest JFA. I love that movie so much. Man, it was a huge influence on me to wanting to, to get into the gym and just, you know, get as big and, and strong as I possibly could. And um, when I watched Pumping Iron, I used to look at everyone in there and just be like, wow, I wanna be like that guy, man. I want a physique like that guy. And just everyone that res like respected those um, bodybuilders, I, I wanted that same respect, you know? Throughout junior rugby league, I went through all the West Tigers development and then I actually tore my rotator cuff and I had to get keyhole surgery. When I'd come back from that, my strength and conditioning coach for West Tigers had moved to America and was the coach of a uh, rugby team out there called the Kansas City Blues. And he pretty much asked me, did you want to come and play for my men's team? We'll fly you out. We'll um, look after you in terms of accommodation. We'll stay in the rugby house. We'll give you a car. We'll give you a gym membership and just like look after me for three months. I just, I, I made that big decision. Stop everything that I was doing at that time and just go over to America and play rugby. Three months then turned into three years. In my three months, the word had kind of gotten around that I was still quite young. I had found out that I still had uh, college eligibility so I could play rugby for college and I received a uh, rugby scholarship to go to Davenport University in Michigan. I studied there for one year and that was amazing like uh, to live that college professional athlete like lifestyle and that was like my first taste of um, what it's like to be a full-time athlete. Oh, it was amazing. It was, it was actually the best thing ever. I then got reached out by the Chilean national team and they had reached out to me and asked me to play in the Rugby Americas Championships to qualify for the World Cup. I accepted that straight away because I thought university was something that I could always come back to but the opportunity to represent your country and my mother's country is probably something that a little bit more important to me. Uh, COVID had hit and I'd moved back to Australia plus I'd missed my family. I'd been away from home for three years and um, I just played local footy for Norell and Jets, uh, just for a local team. Jaden Lang reaches out. Did he get it down? I tell you what he did. That's a great try, Jaden Lang. And I broke my leg. 
I broke my leg playing rugby and I broke my fibula. Nine weeks, no walking, but I'd asked my doctor if I could get one of those disability scooters and he said, he pretty much gave me the okay after surgery. That was the best thing ever. Training with a broken leg. I got a broken leg, guys. <laughs> All right, let's go. It allowed me to do things that I couldn't do before. So I was cruising around on the scooter and I'd go to the gym and I'd still train. I was riding the scooter around everywhere. I'd go and have lunch with the boys. I'd do this, do that. I even went to a, 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 a scooter competition with my, one of my mates, a professional scooter rider. And I rode the disability scooter around with all the boys around the city and they were doing like street competition tricks. And I was there on a disability scooter cruising around with the boys. <laughs> A broken leg wasn't, wasn't gonna stop me from doing the things that I wanna do. And uh, what got me through the whole thing was focusing on what I can do instead of what I can't do. While my leg was broken, I'd also got reached out by EHP Labs. Yeah, which is kind of crazy, eh? Like I'd been a professional athlete and done all this stuff. And then only like while my leg is broken and I'm not even able to perform to my full potential, I got a, a DM from EHP Labs asking if I wanted to jump on board the team and since then I've, I've been sponsored and uh, I was at the EHP Labs booth and I met uh, Max Filize and some of the other EHP Labs athletes and I'd taken photos with them and then I'd learned about all about EHP Labs products and yeah, I haven't looked back ever since. Eh? I, I live and breathe the EHP Labs products now and I take OxyShred every morning. I, I replace it for my coffee. So that's the first thing I take in the morning and, it, and then it's like a natural fat burner as well. I do pre-workout before I train just to switch on and focus. Like it's, it's business time, you know, it's time to work. Once I get to the gym. And then the protein powders, I do morning and night, really just to up my protein intake. Being in the like the gym environment, everyone was always like, man, you gotta take this pre-workout, you gotta take this pre-workout, it, it makes your skin tingly, and oh man. I used to be like, I didn't even need that stuff, man. Well, what is that, you know? Why would I want my skin tingling? Why would I, why would I need that, you know? And then I was a huge fan of Zach Perner, and I watched all of his videos, and his extensive knowledge of the ingredients in uh, pre-workouts and different stuff like that. Still need two scoops of Pride pre-workout to lift baby weight. You know it. 5,000 milligrams of citrulline for the best pumps in the game. He used to speak about that and he used to bring up stuff like keeping you focused and the ingredients in Pride pre-workout is not the same stuff that makes your skin tingly and he didn't like that that sensation either and it made me understand pre-workouts in a, in a different way and I started taking it and now I love it. A couple years later and they asked me to be a guest at the Fitness Expo. Even when they had like released on the website, the, the guests that were gonna be at the Fitness Expo, and they had a picture of me and it was next to EHP Labs, and I just thought that was, that was a spin out day. I thought that was a huge blessing, and that was, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, around that time, I, 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 had, I had a decent little following. I had, I had like maybe like 20,000 followers, and um, once I started making the videos of me in the gym, I think because it was real different on social media, like it was real standout, you know, some guy, on a disability scooter in the gym, but trying to lift weights at the same time. Um, I guess a lot of people took a liking to that and uh, that's kind of like the little Kickstarter that got me into uh, taking gym content full time. Then it progressed into Strongman and I started making Strongman videos and gym videos have been a huge like foundation into taking my social media platform to where it is now. Right now, I compete in the sport of strongman. This is my second year in the sport and I've competed internationally. I came second in a New Zealand competition and I came fourth in Australia. So I'm currently the fourth strongest man in Australia in under 105 category. I really want to be the strongest man in Australia under 105. It would be great for my brand, Lang Strong, and you know, to also have that title as the strongest under 105 man in Australia. Yeah, I just want to compete all around the world lifting heavy weights, making funny videos and doing mad stuff for the rest of my life. Eh? Honestly, the, the possibilities are just limitless. Eh? And I'm really blessed.